Well, howdy. Uh, this Wednesday, Forgotten Weapons did a, uh, a, a piece on uh, the Rogers and Spencer. Uh, Ian is up at the Morphy's Auction House, and they happen to have an original Rogers and Spencer in their auction this, uh, this time around. Anyway, uh, I would strongly suggest, if you're interested in the history and uh, how many of these were made and stuff, watch that video, because he goes into it in depth and does a much better job than I would have. This is a Euro Arms uh, replica of a Rogers and Spencer, which I bought, oh, I don't know, several, a couple of years back from a friend of a friend uh, who needed some money. Uh, I, I seem to luck out in some respects every now and then and, and run into situations like that. Anyway, it's a wonderful pistol. It's probably the peak of design for uh, black powder revolvers. And one thing that I noticed, I was watching a Blackie Thomas video. Blackie is a uh, sort of a backwoods uh, survival and uh, uh, woodcraft guy who does all kinds of, of interesting videos. Excellent. I, I would recommend Blackie Thomas. Find him on YouTube and subscribe to him. He is wonderful. Anyway, he did a video on this thing because he and his travels throughout his neck of the woods ran into one in a small shop somewhere, and he had always wanted one, and he bought it on the spot. I don't blame him. I would have too, <laughs> but I already have one. Anyway, what he said he noticed, the one thing he says no one ever told him is that this gun has something in common with an earlier gun, and I'm going to show that to you. This is a Colt Walker. Actually, it's a... Uh, replica, just like like my uh, uh, other one. But what's interesting about the Colt Walker is it was designed to hold originally 50 grains of black powder over a uh, 44 caliber bullet. 50 grains. That's a huge load. That was, that was more powder than was in the uh, standard uh, carbine 4570 uh, round. In a, in a handgun, in 1847. Now, the problem was, is in 1847, they didn't have steel. They had iron. So a good, good third to half of these that were issued, and there was like a thousand of them issued uh, in Texas, blew up. <laughs> they just des destroyed themselves. And uh, it was a very uh, uh, difficult thing. But, but Colt made enough money off of this deal with the Army that he uh, could then retool up, well, he got the tooling back for this, start making uh, what became known as the Dragoons, and from there everything else is history because Colt uh, really took off and became a uh, household word in terms of co of guns. You know, the, the saying was, God made man and Colonel Colt made him equal. Well, this is the gun that uh, really did the equalizing. Uh, he developed this in collaboration with a fellow by the name of Samuel Walker, who was in the Texas Rangers, who said, well, Walker had used uh, Colt Patterson rifles in the Seminole Wars, and he really thought they were a great idea, but he wanted them bigger and, uh, and more powerful. Well, he commissioned or commissioned Colt to make these and got a, a, a grant from the U.S. Army to make them. He wanted a thousand of them to arm 500 troopers, one on each, uh, uh, two, two to the trooper. And these were not to be worn on the hip. These were saddle uh, guns, or to be worn on a, in, a, in a pistol uh, holster hel held on the saddle of a horse, because they're just too darn big to carry around. And boy, I've, sh I've fired this once, 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 with 50 grains. This is a steel cylinder, so it can actually handle it. The original, not so much. The, the one problem is when you shoot it, this uh, loading uh, lever comes flapping down immediately. It was a problem with the uh, a walker. It was also a po problem with the dragoons. But here's the thing I noticed. If you take a ruler and run it into a cylinder, you'll see that you've got an inch and a half depth on the cylinder in a Colt Dragoon. Well, if you take this Rogers and, and Spencer and run it in and do the same thing, you've also got half an inch. Blackie, you're absolutely right. This thing has the same capacity as a Colt Walker and a considerably smaller package. 
but a package that's made with steel and is made just perfect, in my opinion. Uh, best deal that Francis Bannerman ever made was uh, buying these surplus and selling them off. Or that Euro Arms made when they made copies of them, because these are exact copies of the original Bannerman sale items, which, by the way, is what the one that uh, Ian is looking at at uh, Morphe's is. And if I had the money, oh, if I had the money, I would be uh, making a bid right about now. Anyway, that's just the thing I had to talk about today.